welcome to the DVMia YouTube channel. In this video, I would like to go over my experience on using 128GB of DDR4 on B660 platform with Intel 13700K. Although there are notes that you can see on screen, a lot of information is omitted. And as I'm only a casual overclocker, I mean not too well versed in RAM overclocking, I suppose you can just take my observation with a grain of salt. On the top left of my note, you can see the specification of my system. There are three main points that I need to highlight. Firstly, I'm using an MSI B660M Mortar Wi-Fi DDR4. This is a 6 layer PCB board with a daisy chain memory topology. I would like to highlight this because of the memory overclocking capabilities may vary depend on the motherboard that you're using. Secondly, my memory kits are Hynix M9. They are on 16 gigabit chip, I think. By the way, they are also dual rank. So my configuration is running in quad rank in total. This puts a lot of stress on the memory controller. Finally, I'm burning everything at U1 with a command rate of 1T. In the BIOS, the option that I will use is the 1N. The transfer rate, meanwhile, it is using with the 1.0 ratio. There are also the option with 1.32 ratio. But if I'm correct, the transfer rate with 1.33 ratio they originate from Intel 12th chain. I'm not certain what is the implication of using that new radio. So I just use the traditional 1.0 option. Now let's go over some of the results that I have. The first one is at SMB configuration 3600C18. In other words, even though it was SMB, the setting was not stable under the stress test. By that, I mean Prime 95 and Lipa Extreme soft crashes after a short amount of time. When I say soft, it means the stress test detected instability and stopped it itself, but did not abruptly shut down the whole system. Meanwhile, I did not have any form of WHEA error or BSOD during normal usage or even unlimited Cinebench R23 loop. Admittedly, Cinebench is more of a benchmark, so it's not really suitable for a stress test scenario. I also tried pumping VDDR to 1.38 volt, but the result was still the same. I suppose if I play around with the timing, for example, loosen them a little bit, I might be able to make 128GB of RAM stable at 3600. In the next configuration, I tried running at 3800 with primary timings loosened by about 4 ticks. If 3600 was not stable, I really did not expect much at 3800. And yes, at 1.38 VDDR, the system could not boot but the MSI BIOS detected instability so it showed a BIOS profile recovery screen for me. With that said, I increased VCCSA to 1.4V and VCCIN to 1.95V. If I remember correctly, then these voltage mainly affect the timings. I don't think these numbers are safe for daily usage, but well, they work. Sort of. The loading circle, I mean, the boot screen show up and successfully completed. However, Windows instantly blue screened even before the lock screen and restarted the system. However, as the configuration I think was stable enough to boot, the BIOS profile recovery screen was completely skipped and resulted in a boot loop. I also could not access the BIOS using the keyboard for some reason, so I needed to click CMOS using headers to reset BIOS configuration. Because there was a bootable sound with 3800, I decided to test out behaviors of 4000 transfer rate and above. 
This time, I lose on the timing even further by about 6 ticks and increase VDDR to about 1.5 volt as well. This results in a classic no screen, only fan spinning situation. I also waited for about 30 minutes just to see if there was a chance of motherboard memory training, but nothing changed. So I guess 3800 was an absolute limit of 3700k memory controller, and at that point, I decided to reset BIOS V headers. After trying out extreme configurations, I started looking for a stable spot and 3400C16 at 1.37V VDDR was one of them. This is the one set that I could comfortably run at. I consider this to be a very stable part as the configuration passed more than 200 loops in Limpa Extreme 10GB. However, it could hard crash and shut down the system just after about 3 hours of running RAM 95 small FFT. However though, I did run my system with this configuration for about 2 weeks. My daily tasks vary and they range from relatively light ones such as gaming and software development to other extreme ones like video editing for example. But I did not see any sign of instability. I mean, well, you can argue that it was just because I did not run into any form of HK just yet. But practically, does that even matter? Some say that X amount of hours is required for a specific stress test to say the system is fully stable. But some may say you need 10 times of that amount. It's more of a personal preference, I must say. There's no scientific backup for that. So it really boils down to your acceptance threshold. And in my case, everything worked fine for me during two weeks of testing period. So I consider that to be stable enough for daily usage. Finally, I try a classic configuration, which is 3200C16 but at a 1.37V VDDR. This is the configuration that I'm using at the time of recording and I would say there is nothing too special about it. 3200C16 is a bare bone by today's standard already. This configuration passed 24 hours in Prime 95 small MFT and more than 1000 loops in Limpa Extreme, both 10GB and 30GB option. At least in my use case, 3400 and 3200 do not have any practical difference, so both are acceptable to me. With 3200, the mass speed is around 51200 megabyte per second, and mine nearly max out, so decent enough I guess. If I remember correctly, then 3200C14 is only applicable for Samsung b die so I haven't tried that setting just yet, but really, I don't think that will work, so that's that. This is the end of my initial observation on the Intel i7-3700K with 128GB DDR4. If you want more information regarding DDR5, you can check out a video by Gwendo from Level 1 Tech. His video mostly focuses on Ryzen 7000 AM5 platform, but also briefly mentioned Intel 13 Gen on Z690 and Z790. I will link his video below, so check that out. I'm DVMia, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye now.